So today we're back, back here in the studio. Finally. Um, I'd like to introduce our guest for the day. First guest. First guest. First guest on the podcast. Uh, it's my dad. Um, glad to have him on here. Uh, give us some some wisdom that you know stuff that we we don't know about the Bible that you may have picked up throughout your life. Um, but we're going to get into the fulfillment of the law. Last podcast we ended on the uh, the assault and the light, and um, really powerful stuff. And you know it, we had to we had to end on that, and now we're picking up with the fulfillment of the law. So yep. uh, we'll pick up verse seventeen. It says, "Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter." Not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. So, you have a King James Version, which, you know, no translation's bad. There's some you can get off in the weeds with, but um, yours says not the least, not the slightest jot or tittle. So, instead of? Instead of the smallest letter, um... So that's the, that's the difference in the, in the text there, but the, I like I like the 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 verbiage there where it talks about a jot or tittle because if you're reading if you're reading like Hebrew Hebrew or Greek you go through and there's their characters are so similar that within a, a, a comma which is a, a jot or tittle would be like the equivalent of a comma with a comma you could change like you said earlier like God to gods it could be it could be a little. A small, subtle little thing you could read. Yeah, you change. have to know the context yeah. of what you're reading, especially yeah. with the way that that was written. Mm-hmm. Well, it's just trying to let you explore what it's trying to teach you because mm-hmm. there are words that were translated at different tenses uh, changes uh, the words when you're reading them in the Bible. And uh, when they translated the Bible to, uh, for us to understand, they tried to... Tried to uh, do the Bible where people could understand it. And what's happened through the years is different translations have made it where people can understand more closely what God was trying to teach them in the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Right. That's right. That's why, like, I like reading out of this NIV because for a simple man, like, I'm not a scholar, it, it breaks it down, and I know there's a lot of scrutiny over what translation you read. We talk about that pretty frequently, but... You know, I read this because it's easy for me to understand, and I don't stay here. Like, I don't stay in just NIV. I stay in my study Bible, but then I reference other texts. Like, we talked about right. King James. I knew that beforehand because, you know, I've looked at it before. But it's good It's good to have an open mind when you go into reading and to not just stay focused on mainly just staying in one, one form of text. Oh, yeah, because there's a lot of things that even I get out of a King James that I might miss in this, yeah. and then I end up being able to circle back and connecting the dots in this. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Even if it's difference in phrasing. Yeah. It helps me to connect right. the dots everywhere yeah. and bring it all home. When I was a teenager, uh, we studied the uh, the Living Bible. Mm-hmm. And it was, at that time, oriented for young people to understand the Bible. A lot of kids couldn't understand the King James. The Living Bible brought it more to their level where they yeah. could understand and that's what happens in these translations. It helps people understand what the Word of God is trying to teach people mm-hmm. that they can understand. And sometimes it's hard to understand the jot and the tittle when you don't know what he's talking about. But right. this new translation helps you. Right. And so uh, we pick up in, in 19. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But mm-hmm. whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So that so that's a mic drive right there. Yeah, that's serious. But um, we talked about uh, the, the Beatitudes where it talks about those who will inherit the kingdom. And then now we're looking at uh, your righteousness. Uh, I don't know if we got that far. Uh, for I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Right. So I was I stopped a verse short, but um, I look at like when it talks about the righteousness, their their righteousness was based on on what what they 
deemed what fit. they thought was yeah. righteous instead of what the the yeah. law taught them. Because whenever you would go, like if you if you like our work a working class, so we're carpenters and you're a you're a car salesman. If I went right if if this was biblical times, which I guess you'd be selling donkeys, we'd still be carpenters. You'd be selling like we cattle. Wouldn't, we wouldn't have skill saws. We wouldn't have skill saws. It'd be all hand cuts and breaking boards. Yeah. But um, if you look at like where our position would be, uh, biblical times, we would be sitting, you know, lower class. We're mm-hmm. not. We're not in the in the temple. We're we're yearly making a sacrifice. This is pre Jesus. Right. We're bringing a sacrifice, and we would have to go like we didn't own scrolls. Like right. we have Bibles now. They they didn't have they didn't have scrolls. They yeah. didn't have the word readily printed out yet. So they would go to the Pharisees and, and the Sadducees, I, I would guess. Well, it's funny, not to, not to cut you off here, but the Pharisees, just talking about like our ranking, like lower class, middle class, mm-hmm. upper class, the Pharisees were considered new money, if that makes sense in today's time. Yeah. They worked hard. To kind of... They made their money, and yeah. then once they were comfortable with life is when they decided to get into the Word and learn the law. The Sadducees came from old money. So you think okay. about that. The Sadducees were, uh, they were tight with the the Romans. They were mm-hmm. tight with the political parties because wow. they they came from the money and already had the established titles yeah. of the time. Based on a word of, like, a family name. A word of mouth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, family name. But, um, so they, you would go to a, to a Pharisee to... Translate. I need to know. I need to understand that. What is what is what did you what did you say in the temple about Isaiah or depends right. on who you ask because some wouldn't read past the Torah. Yeah. What did what did Genesis? What is Genesis yeah. about? So you go to them and then they're reading their their laws that were there to protect, which they called their Genesis. laws were called their the the Mishnah. And if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm sorry, but it was their oral code of what they came up with to like. So let's say. God says to not the re, the biggest the best reference I have is whenever it was with the Canaanites I think it's in Genesis or Exodus I'd have to backtrack that but he was talking God was talking to uh, someone to the Canaanites telling like you don't need to that he saw what they were doing they were sacrificing or they were boiling a baby goat in the milk of its mother oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so in, in order to please Baal they were doing this process so God said don't do that stay clear of that. So to this day, Jews won't eat a cheeseburger because yeah. of the fence that was put up. So they put this fence up in front of that law, no which is enemy. the Mishnah. Yeah. No cooking in the same pot. You can't cook cheeseburgers. You can't put milk on a burger because yeah. it's milk mixing the, the two products the two together. one. Yep. So that was their, their drawback. Is that and that was the Mishnah. Yeah. That was their way. Yeah, so I'm they asking. would they would interpret that as And then scripture. they would create their, okay, and then yeah. they would create their own. Yeah, so they would come up with this rule, and then you'd be asking about Genesis. He's like, "Well, actually, actually, what I what I came up with before yeah. is uh, is this. So if you just don't don't worry about this. I'm gonna just slide the Bible, slide, slide that scroll out of the way, and they'd read out of their little word scribe. There. Let's write this down. Yeah, they they'd write down whatever they built these fences up to keep from touching the laws, but then at the same time they would make a gate. To open that gate up and pick and choose when they needed to get close in there. the gate and then go down the road and they keep on picking and choosing what they wanted, which later on brings you to Jesus and uh, we'll get into with you know like murder and divorce. Yeah, it goes back like they they tried to use in, in the stories of Jesus like well, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. What do you do to her? And then according to the law, it says the right. man should have been killed too. Where was yeah, the man? Yeah. They drug him out to test Jesus, to test him. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't about it wasn't about that. It yeah. was about their their mishnah, their code, whatever they wanted to follow. So I thought that was good. I, that was something I've been been reading. I, I've been listening to Steve Stephen Armstrong. He's got a podcast that I've been with his sermons uh, going through Matthew, and I, I found them very informative yeah. of of what he teaches in Matthew. It's just he breaks it down to where you know it's something I can pick up and understand, and like. Blows my mind. Listen yeah. to it. Well, don't we all do the same thing they're talking about here? Sometimes when we sin, we try to blame somebody else mm-hmm. instead of facing it and realize that the things we do are wrong. But a lot of times, people blame somebody else and uh, trying to cover up their sin instead of being like, answer, answering to God for the sin. We try to make excuses. Well, he's owed me this. He did this to yeah. me. We, yeah. we use excuses 
to cover our sins, God knows what's going on in our lives. Anyway, yeah. No matter what. Yeah, we say that's the business. that's the dangerous part of that. Because you get into off because God God knows. Yeah. Because you get into like people that are church hurt or people that are are God hurt, and it's all about like. Yeah, I yeah, used to but, be big in church, and I used to do X, Y, Z, but now here I am. Because of, he said something to me, he was sitting in my seat last week, yeah. and now I'm a, I'm offended. But it wasn't about the church. It wasn't about going to the building. It was it was about going to the building. It wasn't about God. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Why are you here? Yeah. To be offended or to get it down into the Word? I want our pastor every Sunday to, to level me. me. Yeah. Level me and let, just, let God speak. He's gonna to level you. that kid, yeah, one way or another. Oh, there's a video we saw <laughs> on YouTube. It's this pastor where he's talking about it's a youth uh, pastor. It's a youth pastor, and he's talking about this kid that was just pushing his buttons. And at the, like during it, he said, "And I just, I just I leveled just, it. He, I, he hit the kid square in the chest. He, and he said, "When are you gonna quit playing games with God?" So that's our little running joke. We watched that video. It was funny. I mean, it's true. I, you know, I want somebody hitting in the chest and say, "When are you quit? When do you?" When are you going to quit playing games with God? Because the Pharisees were. Now, full disclosure, they bring it full circle. They were preaching this. Now, some of it may have been financially gained. You know, they may be gaining, like Matthew was gaining off tax collecting. collecting. He was making his pot that way. He changed his life. But the Pharisees. He was making a wage. Anyway. No, he made commissions. Yeah, yeah. And he set the price, right. paid the Romans, and then got the top right. of the spit. But anyways, so whenever you look at the uh, the Pharisees, or even take it to like the uh, to Paul, where he says, "I'm a Pharisee of Pharisees." Mm-hmm. He was trained. He was trained up, and he had this understanding of uh, of. He said, "With a full conscience, I can say that I approved of Stephen being killed." Yeah. With a clear conscience, but now that I know Jesus, and I was blinded, and I was Taken, I was leveled until it took that. He said, Jesus hit him square in the chest. And then, he said, when are you going to quit playing games with God? That's what he told him. But, <laughs> but that's the thing. Like In clear consciousness, these people probably preach this, which why that's why they were mad at Jesus. Now, we'll get into clearing the temple later. Well, God was, God was working on uh, Paul. I, I believe when, when he was watching Stephen being stoned, God was already working on his heart, even before he was blinded on the road to Damascus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God had this in plan. He was already instilling in his mind, uh, and he was thinking about this. And, and and when he met God, he knew exactly what he had to do. He knew what he did well, wrong. It's time to and I, I agree with that because whenever he... Whenever it happens, instantly Jesus says, Paul, why are you persecuting me? And he says, who are you, Lord? And he immediately yeah. says, who are you, Lord? Not, not what is this blinding light? Who's speaking? He knew when he got put on the ground, blinded, he knew what happened. He, it, it, was, it wasn't a question of who's doing this. He knew. And that's why there was no rebuttal. There was no, why do I have to go see, uh, what's it, what was his name? Three of them in the New Testament. What was the name? Ananias. 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 He said, go to the old Ananias' house. And it was just like, okay, yeah, here, we go. Well, here we go. And all his, all his partners in crime were like, all right, we'll, we'll take you to his yeah. house. But that's that's that was a full thing. Like, these people thought in the fulfillment of the law whenever they were, this is directed to, the, like, a lot of this is pointing to the Pharisees whenever he's talking about murder, he's talking about adultery, he's talking about divorce. Yeah, he's he was talking pointing to, to them. Yeah, he's, he's in their face. Yeah, well, it, it, was, it was talking about the kingdom of God, and it says, now it says, this is, a, this is unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees. So you have to have the righteousness past that understanding of it's about me, and I'm going to tell you what the scripture says, but I'm going to dip in the pot, and I'm going to do what I want to yeah. do. Because... Which, Brings you back to being meek. Brings you back to the beatitudes, exactly. to the fruits of the spirit. Exactly. It's full circle. But uh, just to before we like finish this up, I would like to reel it back a little bit mm-hmm. because he brought something up. There were two words that stuck out to you when you read this, which you told me earlier: abolish and fulfill. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, he wasn't here to take away the law. Right. There was no sense. There was no point. Of mm-hmm. him to come back and say, no, forget this. Yeah. Because like it says, jot and tittle and not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law. Mm-hmm. And so to fulfill the law, I don't know, he, just, he brought that up in the fulfillment. 
is to show us. And that's one thing with Jesus coming back is to show us how and to, uh, he came back to show us by the way he lives yeah. and to give us the spirit to help us fulfill, bless you, fulfill the way that he wants us to. Yeah. And right. so that's just, I don't know when he, when he said that, you know, I was like, man, I don't want to, I don't want to leave that out. So like, yeah, that. it's, it's a, it's a great point. That's, I mean, that's what stood out to you. Um, is it, what do you what what else do you see from from what you've studied on that? Is there? Well, I'm gonna bring another thing up. Being a parent raising kids, when a child does wrong, when a child knows he's done wrong, you know he's got to answer to mom and dad mm -hmm. for what he's done. And this is what the awakening when we realize we've gotten away from God. That we got to stand before God is what happened to Paul. He had realized what he done. It's like he met. He met his parents right there. When he met the Lord, he met yeah. his parents right there. And hey, yes, Lord, yes. And when, when we've done wrong as a child, we got to answer it to our parents. And uh, my oldest son Seth, I could tell when he was lying to me by his face. I could tell by his face he was lying to me. Mm -hmm. But I, and sometimes when you done wrong, sometimes it's hard to hide it. But you, you got to come to face the music, and that's what we had to come with, with the Lord. When we done wrong, we got to answer to God. We got to come face to face. And this is what happened to Paul. He had to, he wanted to smoke clear that he was standing for the Lord. That's, there wasn't no question about nothing. He had been caught. Yeah. That's true. Well, uh, let's take a break real quick. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. So, mm -hmm. all right, we got to be righteous. Righteous in the sake of God. In the sake of God. Instead That's of right. our self righteousness. Yeah, I'm glad you said it. Let me write that down. So that's that's a that's a hard thing, you know, it when it says those won't inherit the kingdom of God, that's the, that's one of the hardest things to read. Or like whenever you can read anywhere New Testament, Old Testament, whenever you get whenever you get kicked in the teeth like that, yeah. like you, you start to examine because a lot of things, and I, I'm not trying to harp on like this, but a lot of people get hung up on what the world can give them, yeah. and even even people in the church. Mm -hmm. What can I gain this week? What what's going to get me? What's my 401k going to look like? And I get planning and being prepared because God made us to be. You know, we try to be prepared for life. Life's going to give us things that all come from God. And but at the end, the fo my focus is good job or well done my good and faithful servant that's my yeah. that is my so when I read something like you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven if you're not righteous in the Lord that, that's, it's, it's scary you yeah. know just thinking thinking out loud it's scary for me to you know, teach it what I wrote down is that when we the righteousness when we try to live for the Lord it teaches us right things to do and God gives us a conscience to know right and wrong but then he says, when you do what's right, great, it, great in his kingdom. You're in his kingdom of God. When you seek him, then he smiles down from heaven at mm -hmm. you that you're trying to do right instead of what you want to do for yourself, but you're doing it for the Lord without a pat on the back, but you're doing what because God commands you to do these things. And that's, that's, good. So that's good because that's the same. That circles me back to uh, free will, yeah. right or wrong. Why is there evil in the world? <laughs> Why would we... Why would God not stop evil? Because if he did, he'd kill all of us. Yeah, we talked about that we, yesterday. Yeah, we got pretty deep into that. Yeah. So and if that, you if you if you take free will out of the equation, we become robots. Exactly. But then the, my favorite line that I've heard Zach Dasher say is, "We treat God like a cosmic bellhop, mm -hmm. and every time we need something, ding 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 ding, yeah. God, I don't have any money today." But the other, uh, the other ten days, you had you had yeah. whatever you lived. However, that's like when you're praying for uh, God. If you'll just make this half a gallon of gas last me seven hundred miles, yeah, you know, you, you, you get to <laughs> you get to twenty miles, and it's just, yeah, you're like God. If you'll just let me get to the gas station, yeah. A lot back um, several years ago, I tell I told Ben this story. Uh, I was driving through Dyersburg and. My truck ran out of gas at a red light, and out of nowhere, two men came out and helped me push the truck down to the gas station. When the truck coasted into the pumps, 
I got out of my truck to thank these two men. There were no men there. But God sent two angels to help me get that truck down the road, push that truck like a highway speed till I got to the gas station. When I got ready to thank them, they weren't they there. Were they were gone. They were gone. God sent two angels. Uh, two men. That's not a red truck. It's like red. heavy. Yeah. I got a quick one for you, too, then we'll, we'll go on. I'm not going to say any names. This just happened to me, and it really humbled me in a way that made me proud to serve the God That's right. that we have. So I go to this gas station just about every day, depending on, you know, morning traffic, whatever, blah, blah. But this is like my gas station. All of us got a gas station. Mm-hmm. And I've gotten to know these uh, women that work in there. They're super sweet women. They're good people. Uh, good morning, however y'all, every, every day. It's a quick conversation. Well, I noticed one of them. Just wasn't feeling it, you know. Well, I talked to her every day, just about, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Man, what's wrong? You know, something's bothering you." She she told me the her problems was she had a, she had a kidney stone. She's got a doctor's appointment. She hadn't felt good in a week, in a couple of weeks, and I, just something. I said, "You know, I'm gonna pray for you today." And I went all day. I went to work. Didn't think anything else about it. And I laid down at night, and I, I just I said I was praying to God, talking to God. You know, as my friend, because mm-hmm. that's what I like to do, just have constant conversations. And I said, God, I remember, I need to pray. I need to pray for this lady. And I prayed, and uh, I just got done. If You know, we have to believe in the prayer that we're praying, and it, it, consider it done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's paraphrasing. but uh, And I believed it. I prayed, and I said, God, if you'll just help her with this. She doesn't want to go to the doctor, and she might have still went to the doctor. I don't know. But I went to the gas station the next morning, and I walked in the door. And first thing she said, she said, "You work miracles." I said, "No, I don't." <laughs> I said, "I don't." She said, "I passed this kidney stone this morning," and that happened. That happened, and, you know. And I know that's a small, insignificant story, but, but for me, for me in that moment, and trusting, and just man, I believed that prayer. And the next morning, I seen it work. Yeah. And I'm, pr- I'm I was, pr- I was just proud, not for myself. I was just proud that like. To see this happen, yeah, and I just I, I had a good day because the glory and honor didn't go to you. At the end of the day, she was like, "You're so great, you did great." I was like, no, no, I know, I know, I'm not, but I know a guy. Yeah. yeah, God answered that prayer. He was praying. He was just a vessel, and yeah. he prayed to God, and God used your prayer to touch her. Yeah. Not that you had any power to no, do No, I did nothing. I, but, that but story is not God, about me. <laughs> God used you and your prayer. Yeah, and He heard your prayer and her prayer. And he touched her life, and he he did a miracle. Hey, yeah, he did. And I, you know, as when I was younger uh, and growing up, I thought, man, miracles don't happen anymore. Blah blah blah, dude. I see them. I see them now. Yeah, they happen every day. And that's one thing. And we're I don't want to go down the rabbit hole. The miracles happen, but it's the people that chase the miracles that that. That's they're missing the point. Like you're, yeah, you when's, chase the when's my next blessing? Yeah, like when can I count on God to financially bless me? Right. For for three dollars a month, I can invest in this company in this church, and I'll get blessed, and I'll get a mm. a gallon of holy water a month. <laughs> Don't you say that? Don't you? I never said Don't that. Don't you say that? Oh, jeez. <laughs> but people get into chasing chasing the miracle over the miracle worker. That I don't want to know. Like, great if if. A miracle happens, but I don't want to chase that because at the end of the day, you did that. This is gonna get, this is gonna sound morbid. If a miracle happens and you come back from the dead, yeah, you, okay, you're gonna die again. It's not that you're that oh, you're yeah, forever yeah. Yeah. forever great. Yeah, you you will be as a believer, but if you died, all the people that that had miracles in Acts, the people that were like Lazarus came back from the dead, he died again. He died again. <laughs> the little girl that came back from dead, she died. She died. So at the end of the day, like you can chase these miracles all you want, but you're still gonna die. Yeah. Till you know the person that's doing it, not not the not the you praying, but the person that you know that did the miracle. Until you know that person, that's when it changes. Yeah. That's whenever the real thing happens. The greatest and, miracle, and you don't have to fear those things anymore. Right. And the greatest miracle, I can't remember who said it. It's in it's in uh, it's in Corinthians Romans. The greatest miracle. Is mm-hmm. that my name is written in the name, in the Lamb's uh-huh. Book of Life? Yes, it's one of my favorite yep. one of my favorite passages, and I hate that I can't remember where it's at. I just remember reading it. I'm not good with with memorizing where it's at. Yeah. I know where it's at on the page, <laughs> so I could t- I could get you there. But that's one of my favorite things is 
the greatest miracle, I think it said, I saw Satan fall like lightning, mm -hmm. right? I mm -hmm. saw him, fall, Jesus said, I saw, uh, or I saw Satan fall like lightning. Yeah. And then it goes into the greatest miracle is that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's the greatest miracle. So, so we're gonna let's let's get it. We got pretty deep there. Let's Man, get that, into that was good, uh, let's get into martyr. <laughs> All right. So, uh, chapter five, verse twenty-one. Still in Matthew, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, "Do not murder," and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again. Anyone who says his brother, Raka, is answerable to the Sanhedrin, but anyone who says you fool will be in danger of the fire of hell. Mm. Mine said anyone who is anyone ans is answerable to the court. Yeah, okay, so I yeah. got a little sub note here. I got yours mine probably say, says the court. Mine is uh, that's in Aramaic. Yeah. Term the of contempt is what it's saying. Yeah. yeah. And I might have mispronounced that, but that's how I read it. No, 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 it's, that was good. I, I, you said anyone who says his brother, sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. You said Sanhedrin, which is good. Well, because, like, Raka is a, uh, is like a slander, like, a, yeah. it's a word of content, a term to, I don't, like, you fool. Yeah. For us. Be in danger of the fire of hell. Right. Yeah. Um, so, that's a, that's a good point. That's, uh, the, the fact of. The um, talking to the Sanhedrin like that's a big deal. Like yeah, that's, you get, that's you the, get kicked out of the, the church. Yeah, yeah, you get kicked out of the church, then you can't make your sacrifice. Mm -hmm. We're still, I say, we're pre Jesus. We're pre death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah, we're, we're, pre we're, yeah, we're, we're there at the. They're figuring out who this dude is. Yeah, we're not. We're, the same time frame that this is happening, they're still tying bells on a guy's rope so he can go in there and tie a string on him. So yeah. if he dies, he quits ringing the bells and they drag yeah. him out. Yeah. They were still here, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus is here. We're still uh, mostly practicing the law here. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm hmm So anyways, the Sanhedrin, what were you saying about that? I was Googling that word. I was just saying, like, so this is saying the court. So you think of court of law. This is like, if you get kicked oh, out yeah, of the church, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's like immediately, like, you walk by it and they're not doing yeah. this. The cross wasn't a thing. Yeah. But it was... You you're you're in danger of of, of this, and uh, you're kicked out of the church. You're kicked out of the little city. You can't you can't do anything. Everybody shuns you. You're pretty much a leper at that point, yeah. or yeah. A, or a gentile. They consider you the same. You're kicked out of the church. Samaritan. Uh, twenty three. This is this is a good one. Uh, therefore, if you're offering your gift at the altar, and remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. Yeah. So that was something that I that I was listening to uh listen to a pastor a uh, sermon a while back when he was talking about uh being an offender. Oh, right. So you you hear that word and you're like, Yeah, man, I I I'm I'm clean. I haven't broken any of the laws. So like the the, the rich young ruler was like, I clean dog, I ain't done anything. What do I need to do? What can mm -hmm. I do to be saved? Jesus said, get rid of all your stuff. Oh, yeah, sell all your things. Yeah, get rid of all your stuff. Yeah. But at that same thing, you're guilty of one, you've broken all ten. Yeah. You're, you're just as guilty if you lied versus if you murdered somebody. Yeah. And I know everybody says that sin has different tears. It's not. The, the, the penalty is sin death. Is sin. sin is sin. Death is the result in sin. Now, you're going to die, but as a believer, you don't die. Yeah. You're immediately with the Father. Yeah. Right? So... One thing that, that the pastor I was listening to was talking about is uh, if you're there offering your gifts, so you think of this, and this is this might be a big one for for you for the audience to listen to is whenever you you as yourself, right? You live your life and you you call things good that are not good, evil, whatever, and you call that good, and um, you're offending God, the holy righteous God. You're offending yeah. God with your sins. Yeah. What if what if he is the one that you're like that's the one you're offending? What if that's in that in that mindset, like you need to take like if I'm doing X Y Z, I'm I'm running out of my wife, I'm I'm doing all this stuff. You have this offense, yeah. and then God's like, what if you need to drop everything before you you get over yourself? You get over everything that's been that you do that you're doing wrong. You bring it to God. You had your gift, you ran to the altar. Stop and go and talk to God before you, you go to church. Yeah. 
Like, don't don't just say, I'm good, I'm going to talk to God. Like, he doesn't, what if he doesn't want to hear you? Right. Because and, you, and the beauty of that is knowing where you're at within your sin. Yeah. Or or not understanding where you're at, but knowing that you need something. Right. right? Uh, God's going to meet you and love you where you are. Right? You, yeah. you Like, you repent and he'll be where you are, but he's not going to let you stay there. I'm glad you said that because I was, I was hoping you were going to finish that. Yeah. He's not going to leave you there. Yeah. And he's not going to let you stay there. With you knowing and loving him, he's going to pull you from that. Right. And that's the, I hope that was along with what you were saying. Yeah, that's 100%. Is like, yeah, you, because we read this as a as a third world, like, you, or, or you read it for exactly like, I'm offended my dad because I didn't, I, I didn't mow, the, I didn't mow the lawn. Yeah. And so. He's mad at me because I didn't mow the yard now. Yeah. And I need to go to him with a tank of gas and a, and a lawnmower ready to go and mow his yard. Yeah. Well, it's uh, I, I, when you think about this, you think about it's like going to church. You're supposed to be part worship of the Lord, but you come to church, you got naughty and you're mad at somebody. It's sort of hard to face God and listen to music and listen to the Word of God when you got sin in your heart. You said somebody mm-hmm. to somebody hurt somebody, but you're you're holier than thou. I'm here to do God's work and worship Him, but we we've, we've left. We've got sin. And we got hatred. We somebody we didn't say we're sorry about, and uh, sometimes we can let this stuff manifest over years. And sometimes we got to get to the point where we got to. Many times I've I've wronged people and they've wronged me. I had to pray that God would forgive them, and God would forgive me because I can forgive them all I want to, but I got to ask God to forgive this heart and that's myself good. so that we can resolve this thing. And that's what happened. we got to give it to the Lord so he can take care of it. And maybe we can say the right thing in time to the person to heal these scars that we've, we've brought on other people. That right. brings me back to, like, uh, how can we be forgiven if we can't forgive ourselves? Yeah. Yeah. I see, this is like everything you're saying, is everything that's been, that we say now going forward goes right into verse 25. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still together on the way, yeah, or your right. adversary may hand you over to the judge, yeah. and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. Mm-hmm. Hey, settle it. Like you, you got somebody. Like you, the world. Like the, this is such a small drop in the bucket, and where we're at. You're. I mean, I, I'm. I'm about to be thirty next year. Like I remember being five, ten, yeah. fifteen, twenty. 25. 25. <laughs> and here I am approaching 30. I'm getting gray. I'm getting some gray. Yeah. And I remember, I remember growing up, you know, I remember the things, you know, I may have done my, done something my parents weren't pleased with, but, you know, I, I hope that, that they forgive me because I, you know, I, I feel like I've, uh, I've straightened up pretty good. <laughs> I'm, I'm seeking the Lord. I'm, I'm asking for forgiveness on, you know, things that I've done and, and uh, that's the thing. Like anybody can be your adversary. That, that was, I think that's the word I was really looking for. What if you're God's adversary? Yeah. Like you're you're wronging Him in that way, and you need to bring it to Him. That's a good point. I haven't thought of it that way. Well, sometimes we have to resolve, resolve things. So, uh, here recently, my mother died, and there's been some tension in our family, bitterness through the years, and and uh, we are able to get through the funeral well, with no. We, you know, we work together as family, brothers and sisters, without hatred and bitterness. It then things didn't go with certain people's way, but it went went like it's supposed to go. But sometimes it's better like that. And then that goes back to asking God to forgive you if you got brothers and sisters that you've had cross words, and you got to ask God to forgive you and forgive them. And uh, sometimes you can't go to them and tell them that you're sorry because. Uh, you know, sometimes they don't accept that. We've got to, we got to give them to God, mm-hmm. and God does what He does in His own time. And they may be sitting in church or somewhere, and God will speak their heart with us not being there. But God's at work when we pray; He's working on the other end too. Mm-hmm. That's right. And He always listens. That's yeah. something I guess. Like when we pray, you brought up the when we pray. You know, He works. It's it's two ends. We're trying to pray and ask. And he's listening, but the thing is, if people get hung up on why is my prayers not being answered, it's yeah. something in the word. There's three. The there's time. three answers. There's yes, no, or wait. 
right? Mm, that's you got good. yes, no, that's like, good. I'm writing it down. He, he's got the answer. Like if you you pray, God, I, I want a shiny new car. It says, you know, ask and it'll be given to you. Seeking, you'll find, right? Yeah. So ask and it'll be given to you. What is this in in context of, right? It's not in the context of, man, I got a little bit of money. I could shear sh- you some more. No, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. I got. I've got a car. Yeah. I'd really, boy, I'd really like it. F three hundred and fifty. I'd, mm-hmm. I'd really, I really could use it. You got a vehicle that pulls fine. It doesn't need to get, get you, you where point, you a, point B. God's not gonna. He could very well give you everything, but yeah. it goes back to the cosmic bellhop. Like if you ask for these things when you need them or whenever it's convenient for you, but like what are you, what are you doing on the other side of that? And I know God's not selfish, but He's not looking for. I'd be like if all I did was borrow money from my parents. Yeah, I kept borrowing. I kept borrowing. I kept borrowing. And, and they kept the day, seeing you mess up and mess up and mess up. Yeah, if I if I said let me borrow, let me get a hundred dollars, I'll pay you back. And then three months later, I'm like, hey man, can I get another three hundred dollars? And I never paid him back. And he sees me, I'm going out and partying and whatever, yeah. living however I want to live. He sees me blow the money and then blow more money than he knows I, I somehow have. God's, I mean, God will look at you if, as a believer. You're still his kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and I'm, that brings you back, like like. Uh, I watched something that was a, a Facebook reel or whatever, I don't know, and they was talking about like how we get this pretty painted picture of of God, you know, we're say we we need we pray and, and God has His hand on our shoulder and it's okay, son. But also, He's the Father. Yeah, He's He, he is. He punishes. Yeah, he, not in a not in a bad not way. In a, yeah, not in a spiteful way. It's it's the but it's you the did wrong. He, I'm trying to help you. Yeah. stop. Like my dad spanked me a million times. Yeah, he did spanked it work? me. Guess what? Hey, I'm right here reading the Bible <laughs> on a Tuesday night. Like let's let's just face it. I, I want to live for the Lord, yeah. but it's that guess because that was instilled in me. Like the yeah. you know, you and know? the beauty of that, the beauty of that is it was instilled from here from A to B, right? Yeah, and then. You found another gear. How we all do. We yeah. all have to find it ourselves and take it from there. Yeah. You know, because you you didn't you don't worship the same way your dad does. Right. You know, he could I, teach I, you all that he does all day long, but you're not gonna be identical to your dad. You find your own gear and you take it and you roll with it, and that's the that's just the spirit. You know, working yeah. in you. Or well, one word while y'all were talking, one word it hit me is. God help me understand. I think you can ask God yes or no, but sometimes when God is, you're in the middle, you got to say, God help me understand where I'm going because I sure don't understand where I'm going. But help me understand. Help me be patient. I don't know what in the world is going to happen, but I'm putting my, this all in your hands. Help me understand where I'm going because I don't know where I'm going. Now the beauty of that is this brings me to Peter. We just talked about this too. Help, help him under, help you understand, help me understand. During that journey to understand, we can't get scared of what God has planned for us. Yeah. You know, we can step out of the boat and get in the water to get somewhere. But as soon as we start doubting what God's doing in our lives, we're going to sink. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's just, I don't know. It's, hey, that's, it's, Peter's it's, a great example for like, you, you, you go through to the end of John, you yeah. see his story from... Okay, he got all got out of the boat, and everybody's like, "Man, Peter's a real dude. Mm-hmm. He's a real dude. He's a he's a dude, man." Yeah. And he started sinking. They're like, "He's a real dude. Hey, he ain't anymore." <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> yeah, he was a real dude. And then then all of a sudden, like, they're in there for the arrest, and yeah. Peter just pulls that sword out and cuts off the the servant's ear. Yeah. And that was a capital offense. So he does that, and Jesus is like, "Nah, come on, man. That's not it. That's like not that. it. That's yeah. not it." And then. Then it goes forward to now Peter's following at a distance because he's like, Jesus said I was going to deny him. And then people start asking him, Are you the one? Are you the guy that was you with, Jesus? with Jesus, don't you? No, 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 ain't me. Yeah. Three times. One. And then Jesus looked at him. He's like, I, I told you. I told you, bro. I told you. And then instead of you know Judas, we talk about Judas, he took the other path and went yeah. on. He ended up killing himself. So then when you go from Judas, that was that. If he would have waited three days, he would have seen a resurrected Jesus. Yeah. Peter waited the three days, saw the resurrected Jesus, and believed, and then preached the first heavy in an axe. The, the first, first heavy hitter. And then after denying Jesus. So what can we learn from that? There's a lot to unpack and uh, and learn from that. From, but, from but Peter? From Peter. What, what's, the, what's the first thing like? 
I, I the the thing for me is I like the for I like the thing of wait three days. Wait three. If, if God's got something, give it time. Like let like God work. It's not in your time. It doesn't matter. And you don't make three days literally. Yeah, give it time. Is, give it time. Is what I'm saying is just give give the time for God to move and for Him to work. And in the meantime, stick close by. Yes, yes. Stay in it because it's not easy. Most of the time. Yeah. Every once in a while. Hey, you'll be on a mountaintop, but guess what? Jesus was on top of that mountain, too. Yeah. He got baptized. He was baptized with John the Baptist. Yeah. And then went to the wilderness. Yeah. Fasted for 40 days. Yeah. And was tempted in every way possible. Yeah. Don't yeah. you think sometimes we have to tread that water when you done something down? Or sometimes you got to, sometimes you three days you're out treading because you said, God, I sure got to know where I'm going. But Lord, please help me. I, I, yeah. I, I don't know why I'm here, but we're treading there, trusting God to help us. Pull us out of that water. It's like the duck on the water. Kicking on. He's calm on the surface, but son, he's kicking under the water. Yeah. So do you think, I don't know, this is this is kind of a, a weird thing. Uh, but like in that moment, do you think as Peter was sinking, and he starts saying, Lord, help me, I'm drowning. Do you think in that moment, like there was a, like when he put his eyes back on Jesus, do you think he could get a little bit of control back and start to pull himself off? If, if his heart was in it. I think at that point he just forgot. But if, if he kept his eyes on him, he kept focused, and he kept focused, he said, okay, God, I'm going down a little bit, but let me put my hand down. Okay, okay, that's solid. But then again, he's looking away. If he keeps looking down to try and grab the water to stop himself because he knows he's standing solid. And you know how, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Imagine you trying to stand up in a 15-foot swimming pool on the surface. You're not going to. Just how, that's crazy. He yeah. was out in the Sea of Galilee in yeah, a storm. in a storm. Did you... When we when we went to the Jerusalem project when you was little, uh, we went to Savannah. Did you go with us then? Savannah. I went to uh, uh, Centerville or, or, or one in East in Middle Tennessee. Well, we went on that, and what we did, we had a a camp landing with an obstacle course, but it took about six people. Each one person grabbed, and you had to strap on. And, and it wasn't wrong move, you'd fall down, but you, you, uh, there was an obstacle course at the top on wires and stuff. It took six people to help, each person to help get you over there. You had to get, grab this person here, and then you had to make sure this person here didn't fall. But we all had to work together till we got, when you got through, you were was, you was so thankful. But yeah, we had to work it. together yeah. to get through that maze. Yeah. That's what, like the kingdom, as us as the kingdom. Need to look at yeah. It's working like holding each other accountable, staying yoked, staying yoked. You know, we I we talk about it a lot even at church. You know, you and I are yoked. We're, yeah. we're pretty yoked together. We try to do some study stuff and hold each other accountable. Yes, hold each other accountable, and you need that. You need yeah. somebody. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> hey, you could be new to faith, and you could have found you could have found the Bible. At a goodwill and said, I'm gonna buy this book, I don't even know what it is, and start reading it, and that's great. Find you somebody you'll go with. Yeah. Because it will if it if it, it it's not gonna hurt, it's only gonna help. Yeah. Find somebody that I mean, if you're new, find somebody that's been in the faith. Now you yeah. could there's a rabbit hole, of course, yeah, and all that. Yeah. Different beliefs, but that's different perspectives right. perspectives. But it, you you have to you find that person, you look for they believe the death, burial, resurrection. They believe in, in a believer's baptism. They believe in when I die, this is what happens. Mm -hmm. I believe in what the Word says. Now, everything else, you can read. You can grow with it. Yeah. But you, you have to know the fundamentals, what it talks about in Hebrews. The, the fundamentals of the faith, the basic foundation, the, the milk. You have to you have to know and drink the milk first where you can get the milk. Before you get the solid food. And the... Uh... Being yoked like that, I just, in my head, I got like this animation from like Veggie Tales for some reason. I don't even know if it's in there, but that's what's in my head. It's like you're yoking up and Jesus is carrying a cross and you, you're you the man that helped him carry the cross all the way up. And you yoke up with him and, and just pull it, pick up your cross daily. You know, that's what we got to do. Well, in church work, I, I didn't have that delicacy because when you were a youth pastor or music director, you didn't have anybody to help you. Because you was on your own, and if you got down, it's like a preacher. A lot of times, a preacher is trying to pastor a church. When he gets down, he don't have a preacher to go talk to. A lot of times, in fifty years, I tried to serve and help young people and help people in church. 
but I didn't have anybody. I didn't have anybody yoke up to. I mean, mm-hmm. I went to a battle. And we just got through the best. Trust the Lord, help us through it. Because a lot of times we didn't know whether we was going to stay at church or what. But we had to trust God that God was going to see us through it. I didn't have anybody. But, you, could, but you did. You, you had did. my mom. Yeah, or mama. You had mama. You had her. You were yoked with her. Yep. And I mean, it, it's not always a. a it, it's a sister in Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you got it's somebody you found and yoked up with because y'all were in the foxhole together. You serve as a team. No matter if you're a pastor, if you're a pastor and you have a wife, your pa- the pastor's wife is serving at the church just mm-hmm. like her husband is. It's not a solo gig. Yep. But at the same time, a pastor does need support from the church. You're supposed to take care of your pastor because yep. they're the shepherd for the flock, mm-hmm. you know. But I'm not, I'm not putting them on a pedestal or anything. No. A pastor's a person, they're, they're, everyone is a pastor. When you come to, when you, when you're a believer and you're born again, you become a pastor in a way. I'm a worship pastor. I, I sing and play, you know, instruments and I, I lead worship in that way. But it's, it's about the one I'm worshiping. It's, it's, I'm directing people in that. Same as song director, all that. It's all a pastoral position. I'm just trusting the Lord to show me where I'm supposed to go next. Because yep. I know there's something for me, but I don't know where. But I'll still find the opportunity if a person needs to pray with or speak to, that I'm available. Mm-hmm. That I can pray with them and talk about their walk with the Lord if they don't know Jesus. But I can still talk to them about it. Yeah. But I just trust in God to show me where I'm supposed to go, what I'm supposed to do, where I'm supposed to fit in. And sometimes I get tired of not fitting in because... I'm just, I don't mind going to be on the sideline, but I want to be involved in ministry too. Right. Yeah. Well, well, so a lot of times we don't fit in in the world. Nope. And uh, we're going to tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. Sorry, I skimped out on the last verse of the. You do that. You've done that twice, man. I know. I can't help it. I was just where I was. I right. That was a translation. It was translated different, right? Yeah. yeah do you have, uh, what, what do you have on verse 26? Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. So a farthing was, uh, we talked about, a, it was a unit of money. Yeah. You, Google says that it's a unit of money in It UK. says the UK, but I, I, I think it was a, just a unit of money, like a denarii or uh, silver coins. I can keep locking and unlocking this. But uh, I think... Or the least possible amount. It okay. can be broken down. Yeah, that makes more sense. You will not get out until you have paid the last penny, or which the least possible amount is a penny for us. Yeah, you can't pay any less. You than can't a penny. pay any less than a penny. So that's probably she didn't like care her. a farthing for the woman. Is the is the uh, may I have that in a sentence, please? Mm-hmm. Look, can I have that in a sentence? Mike's falling down. Sorry. There it is. <laughs> um. It is a British coin, though. That's, that's odd. Check this out. We'll see if we can put a picture of the farthing up in the show notes right there. Um, that's pretty interesting. But that's two different translations on, yeah. on that. It's pretty. So good. It's a penny or the least amount. I'll so like you're not you're not getting out until you get thrown into prison if you don't handle this. You don't you don't handle this with your adversary. You don't handle your dispute. So now and you may be thrown into. You may be thrown in prison. It depends on the court. And you won't get out until you settle this. Right. Take care take care of your yeah. business and settle And you're not gonna get out even if you pay the down to the last amount. That's telling you to take the high road on it. What, give, what is is it somewhere it's like if someone asked for your coat, give them your shirt as well. Yeah. Give them your tunic. Your and, tunic. Then, and then the Roman law was if if you, uh, they would ask a, a Jewish citizen, you'd have to carry their armor or whatever they're carrying for yeah. a mile. And then, Jesus said, do better, take it an extra mile. Yeah. So, yeah. somebody asks you for a gallon of gas. Fill it I up. I mean, you can fill it up. If you got the financial means, God's going to provide for you. I had a guy, uh, we were on the way back from Ohio one time, and we pulled up to a gas station. The guy's like, yeah, man, if you just give me a couple dollars in gas. And I was like, yeah, I got you. Uh, put it in and put my card in, whatever. Filled my truck up while I was, and I got his, and I just sat there talking to him about about God, and uh, he was telling me a story where he's going to, and then before I know it, clicked. Click. Like, well, <laughs> you got a full tank, buddy. I was like, I didn't think he's. Like, oh, what really? I was like, yeah, man. There you go. I was like, hey, brother, keep the faith, Good keep on trucking. We had people in Florida 
when I went down to Florida. That was, uh, we stopped and a woman was trying to get to see her children. So he stopped me, filled her phone full of gas. Because you don't know if the next time you're going to be the one eating gas. Well, also, be careful who you entertain because you may be entertaining angels. That's what it says in Hebrews. Hey, that's good you said that because I was listening to another one of the Facebook Reels. And it was like, it wasn't satire, but he was like, so imagine if every person, every single person you meet throughout the day is actually Jesus in, this, in disguise. Every So how would you treat that person if you knew they were Jesus? And you'd be washing their feet. So every single person, you know, we wake up in the morning tired, man, got my coffee, blah, blah. I'm going to go to my gas station, right? Yeah. I'm going to walk in and greet people with love, grace, joy, you know, peace, patience, kindness. Peace, patience. Yeah, keep going. Self control. Help me out here. Gentleness, the fruits of the spirit. <laughs> yeah. That's your work. Yeah. To display the fruits and of so, the spirit. Just think about that. Yeah. You know, next time you, like tomorrow, if you, every person you meet, just think of if you're meeting them as if they're Jesus in disguise. That really, that did a lot for me. Yeah. It's funny. Our boss, he hit me again today with it. He said, I admire your patience because I've been messing with this stacked crown all day trying to do this and I kept messing up and I, it was too tight, a little bit too short and at the end of the day he's like, I admire your patience and I was like, I admire your patience because <laughs> I know that you deal with a lot of stuff. You deal with the public, you deal with me, you deal with the other employees mm-hmm. and I admire your patience and uh, it, it's hard. You get caught up in the moment and you, you want to lash out. It's like murder. You think about hurting somebody, you think about but you're mad at somebody. Yeah. Guilty of murder. Straight to jail. You gotta pay the last farthing. Pay it. That's right. But uh, I think that wraps it up for today. Uh, we'll pick the next podcast up um, with adultery 27. in 27. Um, it's been good having you on. I'm glad, been to, good. glad to be able to Enjoy start. It. It's been a great, a great discussion. Um, we're you brought on. a lot to the table, Mr. Dean. And we are so glad to have you. Well, a lot of my life is being around my dad who was a Baptist preacher for uh, all my life and uh, being around him and watching God use him and uh, God passed it on to me. And I've been around, uh, when I hear the word of God, I get excited about it because it all comes back to me that I've heard. Maybe I didn't want to hear it when I was a kid, but now God's word comes back to me and uh, gives me peace. You know, it's funny that you say that because like, we, none of us as a kid wanted to sit there in church. We're like, oh, I don't want to go to church this summer. But, and then we get the childlike faith back. Yeah. And that is such a flip flop. What love is it? That. What is it? The upside down kingdom again? Ah, I got them. <laughs> We've talked about the upside down kingdom yeah. uh, with the Beatitudes. That's what we talk about. The book of Acts is the book of the upside down kingdom. So, uh, yeah, if you guys enjoy this podcast, uh, make sure you. Like and subscribe. Don't yeah. have to. Don't Just, have to. Uh, yeah. Hey, the only thing, if you don't want to do any of that, open your Bible. And read share that. the word. Subscribe to Jesus. Who are you subscribed to? Who are you subscribed to? When are you going to quit playing games with God, Ben? Oh, <laughs> level that kid. Yeah, read your Bible. You know, you don't have to subscribe to us, but subscribe to Jesus. Subscribe to the word. If you're thirsty, if you're hungry, you get filled right here. See, I'm glad you said that. I got one more point. I don't have my notes on my phone. Uh, it was It's talking about subscribing. We can do this after the fact. Or this can be our cold open. Whatever you want to talk about. But it's uh, when it, the social media one-on-one is you're one. You need to have zero followers and be subscribed to one. Mm. So in, in the social media aspect, everybody's all about getting followers and yeah. getting all this. You don't need to have any of that. Yeah. You need to be subscribed to Jesus. You need to have no followers because we're not looking for followers. That's right. Self righteousness is out the window. Yeah. We just if you if you watch, I hope that you get something out of it. Yeah. So uh, stay locked in. Lock it in.